Welcome to NC State University. This university provides a conducive learning environment from the facilities to the faculty. There's really a unique community formed here at NC State by the faculty and the students. Uh, the industrial designer uh, in the arena of design performs a vital role in that they are the individuals that are most attuned to the manufacturing and product development aspects of design. They are most attuned to the material science aspects of design. Uh, their ability to take the everyday object and turn it into a well-defined, well-designed object is essential to us in the design profession. They bring the skills of making and doing. Um, they are the individuals who understand the manufacturing processes and the making process most clearly within the design professions. They are the tool makers and the tool users. Uh, they are more likely to not only design the object but also get involved with the actual manufacturing of the object than any one of our design disciplines. It is a unique aspect of the, of the role of the industrial designer in the design professions. It is an essential aspect for us to actually be able to build and projects and products of quality and I think that perspective is essential to the development of the, of the profession of design generally. It is certainly um, uh, the craft and the art of making is certainly a very American tradition that goes back to, uh, to our earliest designers uh, in, in the country. Thomas Jefferson himself was fascinated with the art of making and, and uh, I believe this uh, in, intuitive inventiveness and ingenuity that accompanies this, the study of industrial design is an essential aspect of what they bring to the design disciplines generally. I think it, it might be useful to, for me to talk about how people develop the vision of a product. Um, the, model that I'm, that the model that I'm using these days and working on it is working with a team of specialists. What you have is a lot of people coming to the table with, with a range of technical abilities. And what frequently happens if you get technical specialists in a room is that everybody's talking a little bit of a different language. That is, that the people in computer science have their jargon, the people within and mechanical engineering have a different set of professional, a different professional language in talking about um, how things are made. What the if what tends to happen is what we call hand waving is that you know you wave your hands to describe things and people walk away with a different understanding. The problem with the problem with verbal language is that when you quit talking, there's nothing left unless you happen to be recording it. Even so, it's very easy for people to get off on the wrong track. What industrial designers are really good at is. Picking up, picking up the piece of chalk and walking up to the board, or these days picking up the marker and going up to the whiteboard, and beginning to capture those ideas right at the meeting and making things happen in a hurry. Um, it's amazing how much, uh, how much of a catalyst this can be to a group of specialists. We, we walk into the room and we say, we want to have something on paper that's a common vision by the end of this one hour meeting. That's not the way that everybody's used to working, and it's extraordinarily powerful because what it means is that you can capture your ideas, you can capture the ideas of everybody around the table, you can put them up on the board very rapidly, you can pass them around as a piece of paper, and you can have people begin to change that. What we try to do after that is that we want to have people walk away from that session and then go immediately into making a quick prototype. Uh, we're not necessarily trying to make the thing, the idea function perfectly or from the start. Actually, what we want to do is, is, is make it fail as quickly as possible. We want to try it the way we're envisioning it and see where the flaws are, see where it falls down, come back together and then build it again. Because design is an iterative process. It's a way of starting something, testing it based on a set of criteria that you established at the outset and then coming back in and building it again and then seeing where that fails and building it again. That's where industrial design, it, it, the greatest strength is, and it applies regardless of change, because change is always going to happen. It's going to be built offshore, or it's, things are going to change in the marketplace. But the process of defining the problem, figuring out who the people are that are using it, figuring out how it's going to be made, and then coming at it with as broad a number of possible solutions as possible, that's the strength of industrial design. 
future of industrial design. There are some who think that design is going to flourish more overseas than it does right now. And, that's, and the reason that they say that is because it is true that industrial design tends to follow manufacturing. And manufacturing has been drained away from uh, the United States. And we've really felt that acutely in North Carolina. It's being done in China, in India, in Korea, and lots of other places because they're able to manufacture the same goods with the same quality, the same speed, but with a much less cost. That means that the manufacturing that was here is going away and it's not coming back anytime soon. Where does that leave industrial designers? Well, some would say industrial designers need to go to China and to India and work over there, and there are many who are. But I see in North Carolina an opportunity for industrial design to blossom. And the reason is, with the manufacturing that's going away, what do we need to be doing here? It's not manufacturing. It's not imitating what others can do just as well at a lower cost. It's, it's not about repeating what's already out there. It's about envisioning new products that have never been conceived of before. That's where industrial designers really shine because we're about looking at the existing conditions and saying, how can we make this better? Is there a tangible way to improve this problem, make this situation better, solve this dilemma using products? And I see that that's where our strength is and that is what's going to help in fact, take the lead in the new economy.